Hola y bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Today we are here with Sam Lloyd. Sam, all the way from Wales, I believe. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Yeah. And Sam is going to share some um, ideas of how you can improve your Spanish very quickly. Wait till you hear Sam speaking in Spanish. You'll be surprised. He is un crack. So what we're going to do is we're going to speak in Spanish for... Um, 10 minutes, five minutes, and then the rest is going to be in English when Sam explains how you can use uh, resources to better your Spanish, okay? But first, we're going to speak in Spanish, so buckle up. Entonces, Sam, ¿qué tal? Bien, muy bien, tranquilo aquí en casa, en Gales. Qué bien, me alegro que estés tranquilo. Y, y Sam, cuéntanos un poco de ti. Bueno, uh, me llamo Sam, vivo en uh, Swansea, en Gales. Tengo cuarenta y pico años. Y, bueno, trabaja, trabajo para el servicio de bomberos aquí en el sur, sur de Gales. Y, sí. Muy bien, muy bien. Y, a ver, Sam, ¿cuánto tiempo hablas? Hablas fenomenalmente bien. Noto que no tienes, no hablas con acento, pero cuando di dijiste... Swansea, sí, con el acento galés. Muy bien. <risa> eh, Sam, ¿cuánto tiempo llevas aprendiendo español? Ah, bueno, llevo más o menos 10 años aprendiendo español. 10 años, sí. Eh, ¿Y por qué empezaste? Bueno, es una larga historia, pero ah, hace 12 años tuve un accidente bastante fuerte mientras estaba de vacaciones en España. Okay. Uh, entré en el mar y me tiré al agua pensando que era más profundo de lo que realmente era uh. y me choqué la cabeza contra un banco de arena y me rompí el cuello Dios. y bueno uh, me, me ahogué en el mar y un amigo mío me sacó me dio el beso de la vida y los paramédicos me llevaron al hospital en, en Palma. Uh -huh. Y mientras estaba en el hospital, mi madre, mi madre no podía creer que casi nadie allí pudiera hablar inglés. Y yo le dije a mi madre, bueno, mamá, es gracioso, ¿no? Que los británicos esperen que todo el mundo pueda hablar inglés, pero nosotros... Bueno, muy pocos de nosotros aprendemos otro idioma. Sí. Así que en un, en un estado bastante drogada, drogado, porque <ríe> me dieron muchas drogas, uh, yo le dije a mi madre, Ma, mamá, cuando salga de aquí, yo voy a aprender uh, español. Y bueno, salí al hospital ahí en Palma después de 10 días. Y entonces tuve que pasar nueve meses en un hospital aquí en, en Cardiff, en un hospital de, de rehabilitación. Sí. Y entonces cuando salí de ahí empecé a aprender español. Bien. Y mira, yo noto que cuando dijiste voy a aprender español, lo decías en serio, porque lo has hecho en serio. Has hecho un trabajo fenomenal. ¿Por qué? Diez años en, en cuanto a aprender un idioma, diez años no son muchos. Pueden pasar rápidamente, pero parece que tú has trabajado mucho y obviamente has trabajado bien, inteligente. Bueno, sí, te digo lo que, lo que pasó es que, como tú puedes imaginar, ¿no? esos momentos eran muy difíciles ¿no? después de un accidente así. Claro. Y el, el aprendizaje de español me dio algo en, en lo que yo podía concentrarme, ¿no? Sí. Y me dio un foco, ¿no? Y sí, en esos días, pues, estaba estudiando como loco, como tres, cuatro horas cada día, Ajá. escuchando podcast, intentando imitar, in, imitar, ¿sí? Imitar, sí. Imitar acentos y todo esto y... Sí, pues 
me encantó y todavía me encanta. Es uh, uno de mis hobbies principales y sigo aprendiendo cada día. Qué bien, qué bien, qué bien. ¿Y, y cuándo descubriste eh, la Speed Spanish? Uh, más o menos ocho años, yo diría. Ah, ocho años, sí. Ajá. Sí. Muy bien. De casi desde el principio, ¿no? Creo que, sí, sí, vamos, sí, sí, sí. Nueve, diez años, algo así. Mm. Sí, sí, sí. Qué bien, qué bien. Eh, ¿Cuál es el, tu sistema? ¿Cuál es tu sistema, claro, de, de, de aprender? ¿Qué haces? Uh, escucho podcasts. Uh -huh. uh, compro las hojas de, del trabajo. Sí. Y meto las oraciones de cada episodio dentro de una aplicación que se llama Anki, Anki. lo que vamos a hablar un poquito después, ¿no? Sí. Y para mí es importante la, repeti la repetición cuando tú aprendes algo, ¿no? Sí. Porque yo, yo podría haber comprado todas uh, las hojas del trabajo y tú sabes lo que hace, ¿no? Tú, tú lees y lo, las pones en un uh, armario o lo que sea, pero con una aplicación con Anki está, están ahí todo el tiempo. Sí. Y sí, yo, yo puedo leer cosas que, que tienen una, una edad de 8 o 10 años en la aplicación de Anki. Sí, sí, sí. Es cierto, Sam, que, que he trabajado... He... He dado muchas clases con muchos estudiantes y, y he notado que especialmente los, los principiantes empiezan a, a ahorrar hojas sí. en carpetas. Y, y en mis clases de, de GCSE que, que hacía, entraban con, con carpetas así, pero con mil hojas, pero no, no podían hablar. Y, no. y es... Como dices tú, es, es, no es tener una hoja, es practicarlo y practicarlo y practicarlo una y otra vez, miles de veces. Sí, co como con cualquier cosa, ¿no? Si tú aprendes cualquier cosa, es, es el mismo, ¿no? Con la guitarra, con, con lo que sea, que tienes que practicar y repetir las mismas cosas una y otra vez. Sí, ese, ese no es un secreto, pero se dice, es el secreto, pero no es un secreto. Así no. funciona la mente, ¿no? A través de repetición lo cogemos. Sí, sí. Mm, sí, qué bien, qué bien. Pues, mira, Sam, eh, tengo que decirte que, que no solo tu español, sino tu acento es fenomenal. Entonces, tengo que... Chapó como Cordón. Pero, es un trabajo fenomenal no, aquí pero uh, viendo de, de ti porque llevo muchos años uh, viendo tus videos y me han ayudado muchísimo y la manera que tú explicas las cosas eres el puto amo te tengo que <risa> muchas gracias muchas gracias sí bueno es, es que es, es mi es mi propósito no es que estoy aquí para ayudar es, sí lo haces con mucha pasión, se puede notar. Pues gracias, gracias. Pues mira, Sam, vamos a hablar un poco en inglés ahora sobre el sistema para que todo el mundo pueda eh, aprovechar, ¿vale? Vale. Ok, so, very good, eh? You're very good in Spanish, for God's sake. Um, uh, Sam, Talk to us a little bit about, I mean, you're a big fan of Anki. I know you do, you listen to podcasts and, and all of that, but your actual practicing, your big practicing is through Anki. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, like we just said, um, you know, you can have all the best intentions in the world of buying the, the worksheets and, and reading them once or twice, but then they go in a drawer. And, um, you know, it's really difficult, like you say, when people have got so many different worksheets from different podcasts they listen to and, And to keep going over them and over them again, it's, uh, it's very difficult. So with an application like Anki, which I'm sure a lot of your listeners are already aware of, yeah. you can really quickly put the, you know, a whole worksheet into, into Anki within a few minutes. 
And that, that information there, then is there forever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's free on a web browser or you can pay, I think I paid £25 one-off payment and, and that's it. And you can download it to your phone then. And also I got it on my, um, on my Mac. And it all links up. So once you um, drag and drop everything into the, the application on the computer, it syncs up with your phone. And, um, you know, you can, you can do your Eurovision every day, daily. Um, you create um, decks, they're called decks. And then each, uh, each piece of information that you put in creates a card. And uh, I can share my screen with you, Gordon, and yes, show you. Oh, yeah, talk us through it, yeah. Let's have a look then. So, so can you see that okay? Yeah, perfectly. So here's my uh, Anki and uh, here are my different decks. So this is my uh, Spanish deck. And, uh, just by clicking add up here, I can like whistle one of your worksheets and uh, I can highlight whatever I want to put in. Uh -huh. Drag it into there, drag the English. In. And that information then is uh, is in Anki for forever. Uh -huh. Another one here. Uh, so what I used to do when I first started was I'd go through all the different um, worksheets which I bought from you guys and other podcasts which I listened to. Uh -huh. Drag them all in, and then uh, you can close this box. And if you click Study Now. Mm -hmm. Um, you can, you know, these, uh, they come up, whatever you, you've written in. And I, I always read them in, uh, out loud. So you can practice your yep. accent as well. Um, uh, and then when you click the button down the bottom, it tells you what it means in English, because that's what you put in on the back of the card. Right. Um, yeah. And, uh, you just, you just work through it and. I mean, look, this, this one, the last time I reviewed this one was probably four months ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and you just sort of continue like that and uh, build up your deck. And like I was saying to you earlier, I think I've got uh, about 10,000 sentences in, uh, in Anki at the moment. Wow. And um, that's what I wanted to tell you as well. Sort of like with, with repetition, say... You having trouble with the uh, subjunctive, for example. Uh -huh. You can type. I quite like this uh, dictionary, Spanish deck. Spanish deck, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, a lot of your students already use it. So, if you click on the examples with tuviera, you can just, um, you know, you can copy these. And pop them, Drag them into uh, Anki. Yeah. And you, know, you can put loads of them in there. And, um, you know, if you're having problems understanding some of the grammar, when, you, when you're seeing it all the time, I think you kind of just sort of absorb it. it just sort of, yeah. you know, when you're seeing all the examples, you, it helps you understand it a little bit more. And, and can, I, can I ask you, so do you have the option of, having the Spanish first and then yeah. deciding what the English is and then having the English first and having to work back to the Spanish. Yeah, you can do it however you want. And also, for example, you can, you can drag something in. Um, you can highlight the... Um, Important. You can highlight the subjunctive part in... Uh -huh in red or whatever. You even got the option of recording what you want to say here. Ah, cool. Si tuviera más hombres como tú en el departamento, you can save that. You want to say here. Si tuviera más hombres como tú en el departamento. Sería una mierda de departamento. And, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's a brilliant tool and uh, I think it's definitely... Um, Help me with my my Spanish and um, and just help me remember things. I, I wish I had it when I was in school with all the, the subjects I took for <gasps> for GCSE. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you very much for that and for sharing that. Um, I, I mean, I've been aware of Anki and lots of our students actually worked when we did um, Victor's Adventures, the book. 
lots of our students club together and, and put the book into Anki as well. Ah, oh, cool. But I have no idea where it is. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. It's in the, in the ether. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's like um, with the, the latest book that we've just released, I wanted to do something where I could get people to also remember, because reading a book's great for yeah. understanding, but then the understanding has to be taken into the practical doing. So right. we just we just put all of the um, prepositions into flashcards. So they've got a flashcard uh, base that they can just go through and repeat. And I mean, it's the essence of Anki is really it's just that flashcard of do you know this or what is this, isn't it? And it's just this repetition. Yeah, and it's funny. Um, some some days I think to myself, oh, I haven't seen that card for a long time, or I wonder how you say that, and, and it will pop up that day. Like uh, I'm not <laughs> sure where the the algorithm's doing a little bit of magic in the background. In fact, it happened today. One of your cards pa- popped up. It was a story about Sergio and uh, Sergio uh, Ayo and Ruido de Trastel y cogió su raqueta de tenis o algo así. Sí. In one of your stories and uh, yeah that popped up and i was like wow what a coincidence i'm going to be speaking to gordon later and that's uh, that's popped up today that's that's not uh, anki that's the universe coming into play yeah that's right. really different yeah <laughs> um very good you know um looking at what you were doing and looking at how clearly in in 10 years your spanish is is at an ex- extremely high level right look that is that doesn't happen to everybody lots of people have spent lots of time lots of years learning but they haven't managed to get to this fluency level yeah i think one of the one of the issues is is obviously what you're saying is you dedicated a lot of time to it as well it isn't just saying you know saying i've been learning for 10 years could be anything yeah two hours a week for 10 years you know and you're not very far or 50 hours a week for 10 years so it's it all depends on on how much time you put into it but yeah. what would you say um, for somebody who really wants to get to grips with Spanish, how many hours a week should they dedicate to it? Uh, I, I've got a few friends who uh, are learning Spanish as well, and I just keep telling them, you, you've just got to do a bit every day, like 10, 20 minutes a day, and uh, you'll, you'll see the results. You'll definitely see the results. I think um, too many people sort of focus on on the end goal of becoming fluent and, you know, speaking perfectly. But it's really difficult to to arrive at that point. And, you know, I don't feel I'm there myself yet. And I say that genuinely, you know, I'm learning every day and, you know, improving all the time. Yeah. But um, I think sort of uh, you should, like, sort of take pleasure in making little, you know, gains and being having a little conversation and do a little bit every day. And uh, I think... Uh, uh, Shakespeare captured it beautifully when he said, uh, I think he said something like, things won are done, uh, life's joy lies in the doing. So, you know, just really enjoy practicing and having little conversations here and there. And you, you're going to advance if you keep at it. What, what happens is people don't see results quickly. Mm-hmm. They just give up. And, uh, you know, if you, if you record yourself and then look back in six months, after doing a bit every single day, you'll, you'll notice a massive dis- difference, I'm sure. I agree with you entirely. It's, it, it really is the answer to it is not. I often say to people, don't try and do two hours a week in a block of two hours. Split it. Those, the, if you only can dedicate two hours, do 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day. Yeah. And your mind, our mind loves small chunks. We like to chunk stuff down. I mean, it's the, the saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> how do you learn Spanish? 20 minutes at a time. Yeah. You know, it isn't, it isn't I'm going to sit for four hours and do this. After, after 20 minutes, your mind's somewhere else. That's right. Uh, I read a great book the other day uh, called Atomic Habits. Yeah. And it was uh, talking about sort of habit stacking and uh, how you can create sort of... Uh, good habits by, by stacking it onto other things which you do daily. So for example, with the Anki, you know, if you're waiting for the kettle to boil, you can do 10 flashcards on Anki. And every time you make yourself a cup of tea, do 10 flashcards. That's, you know, a few minutes done each day and, and it just builds up all the time. Absolutely. And that's another key thing. It's, it, it, I, I actually called it piggybacking. You oh. piggyback, piggyback your learning on to something that you've got to do. For example, um, you know, how many people walk a dog? 
yeah. you know, you're out walking the dog, you listen, how many people drive 20 minutes, 30 minutes each way to work? All of that time. So what you do is you don't have to create new time. You just have to utilize the time that you, you, you're wasting in your life. Exactly, yeah. When I used to drive back and forth to work, it was uh, sort of a 40 minute drive each way. I just used to listen to podcasts all the time. Your, your podcasts, other podcasts, just have them on in the car and uh, it just makes a massive difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're filling that dead time, aren't you, with uh, something positive. We actually have lots of lots of dead time. The, the issue is that now we have mobiles, so that dead time is now still dead time, but <sighs> occupied dead time. Yeah, so, but even so, if you if you know if you're stuck to your mobile, if you find that you you know you want to go to the loo and take your mobile with you, which I think everybody does now, um, do some anti flashcards while you're there. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Hey, well, listen, Sam, that, that has been excellent and, and brilliant information. Um, I'm sure everybody feels very encouraged by it as well to show that you can do it. And if you can do it and you've used this system, then people just need to follow. You know, you don't have to invent anything new. You just have to do what other people are doing. Find uh, it successful. Yeah, that, that's right, Gordon. And there's, there's sort of like uh, every the other day, there's, there's two people, two types of people in life, people who see other people doing something and they say, I wish I was able to do that. And then the other type of people see people do it and say, well, if they can do it, I can do it. You know, it's not, it's not impossible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 what did they say? If, if somebody else has done it, you can do it. And yeah. if nobody else has done it, you can be the first. And uh, you've got to start somewhere as well. My French is terrible, but uh, I know that if I uh, keep practicing that one day I'm, I'm going to be half decent at it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I had a conversation with my son. He's, he's learning the violin amongst other instruments. And he was saying, I, I thought it was going to be easier. And I said, look, I promise you. And it was, as you were saying, I was hearing my own words, which I said to him, if you just do t- 10, 15 minutes a day in one month, I promise you that you will be m- far better than what you are. And it'll be far easier. And it's the same with Spanish. I promise people that if they do 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, every day, in a month, they'll see a difference. In six months, a vast difference. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Yeah. Okay, Sam. Well, thank you very much. I really bueno, vamos a terminar en español, coño. Eh... <laughs> no, gracias a ti, Gordon, por todo lo que haces con Cynthia. Pues increíble. Y... De nada. Es, es, es nuestro placer. Es, es, mm, estamos aquí, ¿sabes? para hacer eso. Y, y eh, muchísimas gracias, Sam. Claro. Te deseo mucha suerte con tu francés también y que, que sigas, joder, hablando es, español tan bien. Y por cierto, por cierto, tú has dicho que en tu opinión no has llegado, ¿no? Todavía tienes cosas que aprender después de 10 años. Sí. Yo estoy en el mismo lugar. Yo... Yo tengo toda la vida eh, por delante. Sí. No, que yo no, no he llegado en ningún parte. Como se dice, es un maratón, no una carrera, ¿no? Una, claro, claro, sí. claro. Entonces, muy bien. Eh, Sam, entonces, espero hablar contigo en el futuro otra vez, ¿no? Sí, me encantaría. Vale, hasta luego. Gracias, Gordon. Bye.